Welcome to Norfolk Perspective City Slice. I'm Bob Batch, and I'm here with a very special guest, and it's not the Hedgehog. It's Wynn Danielson. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Got you down as marketing and, and public relations manager for the zoo. Yes. But I'm going to share a little bit about what's been going on pre-tape, because we've got another special guest, and his name is? Uh, his name is Tumbleweed. He's an African hedgehog. And Tumbleweed really isn't the best behaved <laughs> guest that we've had on the nope, show. No, that's true. But... And so you have been very busy serving our country, right? Mm -hmm. As a PIO with a public affairs officer for the Massachusetts National Guard. Um, and uh, I, right now I'm actually a um, operations officer for the Regional Training Institute up there, but my background is public affairs. Okay, and I want to thank you so, for that. And you bring mm -hmm. a lot of wisdom in that. From, did you ever think you'd be cleaning up behind a hedgehog <laughs> to get ready for a TV show? No, uh, the zoo's a little different than military public affairs. That, that's true. Um, but it's, uh, it's fun. So I was going to say, the, zoo, it, the zoo's got to be a fun place to work. Absolutely. But there's a serious side to the zoo, too, right? I mean, Absolutely. I mean, we're dealing with uh, live animals and uh, people, not only our zookeepers, but uh, the members of the public who come to the zoo uh, build a relationship with these animals over time. So um, it, it can be a very emotional uh, connection between people and the animals. So we have to uh, provide the best care possible for these guys. Yeah, and it's, but is it, it's not just, I mean, those animals are not there just for our entertainment value. I mean, the zoo really has performed some tremendous missions when it comes to uh, the propagation of animals, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we have three core missions at the zoo. Okay. Uh, one is recreation. We want people to come to the zoo and have a good time. But the other two are education. We want people to learn about uh, these animals and their habitats uh, because that facilitates our third mission, which is conservation. Uh, we want to facilitate people con conserving these animals and their habitats in the wild so that we can preserve them for future generations as well. Oh, uh, when this guy looks really wild. Okay, <laughs> tell me a little bit about... Uh, well, he is, he is. He's an African hedgehog. Um, they are omnivores. Uh, from they range from uh, Zambia to Senegal to Sudan in Africa. Uh, they eat a variety of different things. They're omnivorous, so they eat insects, they eat eggs, they eat fruits, they eat uh, mushrooms. Not, so not TV host. No, no, okay, he's cool. a little small to eat a TV host. But on the other hand, he looks like I don't know the run-of-the-mill hamster that I had when the kids were growing up. Yeah, he's a little more he's a little more sticky than a than a hamster would be. You can see he's oh, got so, quills. So don't do this. Yeah, no. Uh, he, uh, he if you try to pick him up from the top, he would arch his back and stick his quills into you. Now they're not like porcupines. If you if, if a porcupine sticks you, you pull it up, you still have quills in your hand. His quills, for the most part, stay on him, um, but they're still unpleasant. So okay. <laughs> when we pick him up, we have to try to go from underneath. Okay, now you threw me another curve because in my in my crack research and what they really want us to talk about mm -hmm. is a is a, a plant conservation day. What's that got to do with the zoo and animals? Well, you know, a lot of people think when they think of the zoo, they think of animals, but the fact is we have uh, quite an extensive array of gardens and horticulture operations mm -hmm. at the zoo. Um, one is that we have gardens, so people walking around can can just enjoy themselves at the zoo and the gardens. But also, uh, we use a lot of that to uh, get uh, enrichment items, enrichment plants that our animals eat, and we bring those to the animals as well. And and we also in the habitats, we try to design our habitats so they're as close to the natural environment as possible. We have to bring plants in there that are non-toxic for the animals um, oh, okay. and that uh, approximate ones that they have in the wild. I mean, if we can have the actual plants in there, we will. But um, you know, the climate here is a little different, so sometimes we have to use local plants that are non-toxic but also are close to what they would have in the wild as well. I was going to say, because I do see bamboo around the zoo, and yet mm -hmm. I also see it being eaten by some of the animals. So that's Yes, absolutely. And that's part of what we try to do is provide the animals with. We have a lot of animals that are browsers, and so we try to grow uh, plants that they can browse on just like they would in the wild. Okay. Now, speaking of eating, mm -hmm. how are things looking for the new facility that's being built? Oh, the, uh, you're talking about the Animal Wellness Campus? Yeah. Yes, it's going well. Um, we have uh, about $600,000 to go to raise to build the new uh, Animal Wellness Campus. That was an immediate plug. Yes. <laughs> Contact so, the zoo, either by website or phone, if you're interested in Absolutely, virginiazoo.org. Okay. Um, or uh, if you have a phone, uh, 441 uh, I don't remember my own number. 757-441-2374 uh, is the number. So uh, either way, uh, we'll hook you up, and uh, you can help us build a facility that will help us continue to provide uh, the best care possible for, for little guys like this. Well, and you know, and you big guys as well. I was going to say, <laughs> you, you kind of mentioned little guy. So, when I, I, I got to share with him, he's really cute and everything, mm -hmm. but is that the best you could do? 
Well, I did bring along another guest. Oh, really? I, I thought that was our picnic for after the... Oh, wait no, a minute. Wait no. a minute. What's... This isn't a beer cooler. Well, it is a beer cooler, but... Uh, Ooh, it's moving. Certain types of animals, uh, like reptiles, have... Reptiles? Much, yes, have much lower metabolism, so, yeah. so they're quite comfortable in the cooler. Uh, looks like I might be more comfortable with him in the cooler. You might be. And the hedgehog probably would be, too. Um, i got to find his I'm head. I'm seeing... Or her head, actually. Her name is Maddie. You're looking for a head? I'm looking for her head. Her name is Maddie, and she's not cooperating, but look, here we the go. The hedgehog is trying to escape, too. We could end up with... Wait a minute. What is, is that? This is Maddie. Hello, she Maddie. She's a Madagascar hognose snake. and uh, With a tongue. Yep, she's no. also from Africa, from Madagascar, appropriately enough. Uh, she's called a hog nose because you can see kind of her, her nose, oh, yeah. how it's kind of flattened. Now, this is to help her burrow. Um, she, she can dig her own burrows, but really what she uses it most for is to widen other burrows. So when she, she preys on small mammals and amphibians. So when they go into, into burrows to try to escape, uh, if, the, if the burrow's a little too small for her, she can use her nose to kind of widen it and make it bigger so she can get in after them. Now, the tongue action here, what's, what's that all That's about? That's how they smell. Uh, their, scent, their scent receptors are actually up in their mouth, so uh, she's smelling to see what's going on. She, yes, she may smell the hedgehog, so I was gonna say, we have to keep them separate. I was gonna say, <laughs> That's nice to know. Yeah. The hedgehog also seems to be kind of acting out a little bit. Uh, he, I mean, may, he may smell the snake. I mean, th these two don't share habitat together, but obviously there are snakes where the hedgehog is from, and, and they would be a prey item for a snake. So. Um, you know, he's, he let, wouldn't let be happy if we kept them together. The, the education approach. I mean, these both these animals are used for education. So Absolutely. Even though I'm a little uptight, he's not quite as uptight. No, Maddie's Maddie. Both Maddie and Tumbleweed are education animals. So we use them specifically for educating school groups and and also Cub Scouts and birthday parties and things like that. But again, um, part of that whole mission that it's not just for our own entertainment value. Right is to teach people about these animals. I mean, the way to look at it is these guys, and we call them animal ambassadors, and that's really what they are. They, they are uh, animals that are, are here to teach us about, uh, about their world um, so that hopefully we can have a better understanding and, and, and help conserve their world, so. Okay, and these guys are from different parts of the world, and the zoo is kind of organized that way with different... Um we do. We have the zoo organized um, kind of like uh, according to continents. So we have okay. an Asian exhibit where you'll find uh, the af animals you would typically find in Asia. We have an Africa exhibit, um, uh, Australian exhibit, or North American exhibit. So we try to keep the animals together uh, in the areas where they're from so you can learn about, uh, you know, their, where they're from geographically as well. Um, yeah. Now. Uh-oh. For the sake of the person who doesn't know where the zoo is, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I, unfortunately my hands are busy. So I'll handle this one. <laughs> just try to take him from underneath because on the top he'll, he'll, he'll stick Okay. So. Uh, for, the, for the one who doesn't know where the zoo is, where mm -hmm. is the zoo? Zoo is at 3500 Granby Street, um, which is in Norfolk, and uh, it's open seven days a week. Uh, we're only closed four days uh, from 10 a.m. to 5 a.m., and the only days we're closed are Chris, uh, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, Christmas Eve and um, Thanksgiving Day. Okay. Uh, other, other days were open 10 to 5. Now, he quit smelling. Oh, no, there he goes. No, he still smells. Now, uh, for the person who says, I've been there before mm -hmm. and it was 10 years ago, what do you have to say to him? Uh, if you haven't been to the zoo in the last year and a half, you really haven't been. I mean, we just opened last April, about a year ago, an $18 million uh, exhibit, Asia Trail of Tiger. has some fantastic exotic animals uh, from across Asia. Um, it's a five and a half acre exhibit. It really is. It really is something to see if you haven't seen it, and and we're still growing. Um, as we talked about before, we're working on building a new animal wellness campus, mm -hmm. which will increase our veterinary facilities to to provide better care for our animals. But also, um, there's an educational component to it as well. People will be able to come and watch procedures being done, and we'll have um, you know signage and graphics there that'll uh, teach them about uh, animal diets and animal medicine uh, as well. So, I got to ask you, how are the orangutans doing? Rain tanks are doing good. We still haven't got them to go outside. They, now, they have always been inside animals, right? They were zoo bred, yes, and they've never had an outdoor habitat before. Uh, but orangutans are notoriously shy. Um, it's actually a conservation challenge for them in the wild in that if there's logging in their area, they don't, they don't leave. They don't like new things. 
Um, so it takes us a long time to, to, to get them to do something new, and, and getting them to go outside is, is, is proving to be uh, one of those challenges. Do you so just kind of open the door for them every now and then? We so do. We open it out. We, we show them uh, outside, and we give them opportunities to go out. They haven't taken us up on it yet. I mean, it took us several weeks to get them from uh, their indoor habitat, their behind-the-scenes habitat, to their indoor playroom. And we tried to lure them out initially with food, but Pepper, the female, would take the food back into Schnitz so he wouldn't have to come out. Um, oh, that's now they thing. love the playroom, and they're in there all the time. In fact, we have a hard time getting them out of the playroom, but we still have not gotten them to go outside because they've never been outside before. So it's a new, a new experience for them. Well, it's not just animals. It's plants, too. So May 19th, come on over to the plant. Yep, Plant, plant. Conservation Day and Sky Art. Uh, so uh, you'll come and learn about conserving plants, which, of course, provides ha food and habitat for animals. Um, but also we'll be doing Sky Art, which is uh, we'll dress people up and, and arrange them into a pattern and then we'll take a big crane and we'll go up and we'll take their picture and we'll incorporate that into a piece of art that uh, um, we will uh, enter into a competition and if we win then we get to donate uh, some extra money to some of the plant conservation uh, groups that we work with uh, like the Elizabeth River Project. Cool. Well, when I, get, I gotta tell you, I'm getting comfortable enough with the snake that I might ask you to let me hold it, so I guess I better get going. Okay. Okay. You can hold him. Let me hold, let me hold her head. Okay, and we'll close ooh, on that. Thanks a lot for joining <laughs> us. Go ahead to the zoo and see if I survive this snake. Thanks a lot.